Hey there, fellas. Okay, so in this episode, I suggest we try experimenting with essentials. Check this out, that is a shock absorber. Just a regular old shock absorber. Build with oil, Russian made. They are typically of one size, but we were doing a build and we needed a few long ones. With a lot of travel. Now we all know what purpose shock absorbers serve. They are meant to keep body movements in check. So basically, here we are driving along, and you'll see that the shocks on this car do work to some capacity. Simply put, they don't allow the car to rock and jump around while you're driving. Anyways, so we needed some shocks with a lot of travel. We went out looking for them. And honestly, the shocks we found were carrying a price tag I couldn't really stomach. And so we decided to make our own set of shocks right here in the garage. At minimal cost. But they do have to be functional. For starters, I suggest we try making a smaller one, about the size of an OEM shock for a lot of them. We'll be going for simplicity, a piston, couple of seals, and of course some oil. Let's give it a try. And I do think we'll be successful in making a DIY shock absorber. We make our own DIY shock absorbers. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check it out! We've got our first experimental specimen. We've done the cylinder, some grinding to the inside, it's all good. As for the rods, well, we grabbed some prefabricated ones, which were also subject to a bit of grinding. We like to make it so the shocks work the same in both ways, for action to be the same in either direction. No matter whether they're moving up or down. And so I'm assuming, yum. We can drill a few holes, through which there will be oil transfer. Now I am making assumptions as to how this actually works, well, that we'll find out later. For now we drill a couple of 1mm holes, fill in the oil. So we assemble, fill, and test the effectiveness of what we've concocted. Let's do this. So look at this, we've made um, a couple of lovely DIY shocks. What can I even say, they've turned out pretty much like I expected. You have to exert about equal force to move this in either direction. Although I still don't know um, if the speed at which it moves, whether it'll, um, whether it'll be suitable for normal operation or the car to drive adequately. Now these don't have any sort of chambers inside of them. It's just a cylinder, a piston, and a few holes. Now there is a slight issue, especially in the beginning. This has a bit of slop in it. And um, I do think the root cause of that is fairly obvious. You see, when the rod is moved all the way in, it obviously takes up a bit of room, and it's going to push some of the oil out. But if we were to assemble it with the rod, with it fully extended, then we wouldn't have been able to push it in all the way. So this is something we initially overlooked, and we only realized the problem when we were putting them together. But no big deal. The shocks are ready, and I guess we should try testing them as they are. 
Now, the car currently does not have shock absorbers in the rear. We have removed them, and look at what it's doing. How can you even drive a car like this? It's just jumping around. Oop, careful to keep the springs from popping out. We filled these with hydraulic fluid. And we won't find out how they work until we install them, right? They feel okay when you work them by hand. But now it's time to install them and uh, see how they do. Okay, so we've fitted the shocks, and we're about to rock the car for the first time. Was doing what? Wow, look at that, for real? Immediately a success? You think it's rocking because of the fronts? It seems to be planted quite... Once it stops moving, it rises a bit. That's about what we were going for. Yeah, they work. Let's drive around and see how they do. We seem to be alright. We're going over some slabs, seams... It's tough to tell. But this road is exactly what you'd want... for this kind of testing. Well, so far so good. Okay. Yeah, this is a good place to try them out. They work fine at lower speeds. It's all good. But both the front and the rear end are slightly jumpy. And here we go. Look at that. Yeah, they are a bit firm, that I can tell you. Yeah, and at higher speeds, things get bumpier. Though they say that the faster you're going, the less bumps you're gonna hit. But in this case, the suspension is quite firm. And it steers all right, look at that. Obviously, there's not much grip up front, and so we've got a bit of understeer. But at least the rear ain't jumping around. Okay, so here's how things went down. These seem to work. The car's got a decent stance. You would have seen me steering left and right on that bumpy road. To imitate a sort of a bad rear shock absorber scenario. With the rear end moving around and such. And these work very well indeed. That being said, when you're driving down the smoother patch of road and right after that... You wind up on the bumpy section, well, as soon as the suspension begins to articulate, and it doesn't matter which direction, things become a bit choppy. So the suspension is quite stiff, and it's the same story when you're rocking it. And so, we've got two holes in each piston. Why don't we go ahead and take the shocks apart and try making them a bit softer? In each of the pistons, we drill an extra hole, or a total of three in each one of them. We fit the shocks to a car once again, and see whether these custom shock absorbers uh, function better or get worse as a result of our revisions. Because I'm curious to find out how many holes you need to make for the oil bypass occurring between the two chambers of the shock to happen at just the right rate. Okay, drill, assemble, install, and do some more testing. Okay, we've brought the car down, and now the interesting part. Let's try... Let's rock it together. Oh, nice. They seem to have gotten even better. It sort of rebounds and gets right into the correct position. It definitely feels more compliant. And all we did was add one hole. You mean two holes. 
Well, I mean one hole per shock absorber. Nah. What do you mean, nah? What, you made two in each? Yeah, like you told me to. I told you to add one. Two overall. But I asked you if one would be enough. Two in total, as in one per. In each of the pistons, we drill an extra hole, or a total of three in each one of them. Regardless, the pistons now have two extra holes each. You get the picture. Eh, no big deal. We can always block off one of the holes, bore it out, tap some thread, and uh, put a screw in it. Mm, Sergey. Okay, they work, I'll give you that much. Now I just need to go for a drive and see how they perform out on the road. Here we go. I don't think the seams between the slabs of concrete are all that hard on the car's suspension. But I definitely feel something. And I'm sure to get an understanding very soon. Oh wow, this is so much subtler. Like... The front suspension is knocking over these plates. The rear isn't whatsoever. For real? They work? But full compression does seem to be occurring. In the position I showed you guys earlier, where you've got a sort of click when the rod gets moving. Let's see. There we go, some potholes. The car isn't rocking around. We're doing well. It ain't floating. Handling is okay. No weird disturbances. I think we've done well here. The rear end is behaving perfectly going over the edges of these plates. Well, at least by the standards of a lot of them. Like, it is superb. It is very supple. Especially where you've got big gaps in between the plates. It does very well. What about the larger gaps? Terrific! Check this out, guys. This was fairly interesting. So a cylinder, a rod that we pulled out from the old shock absorber, the seals were in good condition, but that you can easily make yourself, fit an o-ring and you're good. You can machine all of the necessary parts, and the piston well four holes, hydraulic fluid, a nut so you can take it apart and pour it in, we could have fitted a filler valve, but the nuts seem to be the simpler solution. We also wanted to have the option of dismantling it just in case. They work beautifully. Just as good as any store-bought shock absorbers. I'd say this experiment has been a 107% success. The shocks turned out great in my opinion. And I'm just gonna leave these where they are, since they work so well. We'll still be driving the car and observing, seeing how it's going to behave going forward. Anyway guys, this turned out great and that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.